кандидатам, які пропонують від 5 до 7 років, а громадянам, які приймають підкуп, 2 роки або штраф від 1700 до 5100 гривень. Порушення виборчих процедур – виборці – штраф 1700-5100 гривень або обмеження волі до трьох років. Службовці – штраф 5100-8500 гривень або обмеження чи позбавлення волі до трьох років. Пошкодження скриньки – від 5 до 7 років позбавлення волі. Good evening from our headquarters in Kyiv. Ukraine today has voted for a new parliament and we will discuss tonight why it matters and what does it mean. So tonight we'll be taking a look first at the poll numbers, then a little bit closer looking at the situation in Crimea and the DNR and LNR, and then we'll be joined by some experts to talk about the situation going forwards. So first we'd like to pull up an infographic just showing the first results that we have tonight from the national exit poll. Uh, hopefully we can get that up there in just a second. And uh, definitely there are some of the surprises. The president party, which is leading and still leads uh, with around 23%, uh, has, uh, well, the results were less than uh, it was expected. In different times it were 30, 40, um, up to 40. Now it's almost 23, while the second party is the uh, Prime Minister party, uh, Arseny Yatsenyuk party, which is also running close to this. No, and that's correct, because when, when we were working up towards the elections, the polls consistently showed President Poroshenko's party blocked Poroshenko being in first place. So the fact that his party now, according to the exit poll, is in first place isn't surprising, but they did receive a smaller percentage than what people expected, at 23%. Now, that makes it more important for them what parties receive larger percentages in terms of pursuing coalition partners. What was a larger upset was the National Front, Ukrainian Prime Minister uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk's party, which received 21.3%. Now, at different times, they were projected to receive less than 10% and then slightly above. But really, this result of 21.3% was not one anyone expected. And of course, uh, another surprise is the success of the uh, self-reliance party, Samopomish in Ukrainian, uh, when with, in different polls we have 13, 11, 11 or 14 percent, but it's way ahead than, for instance, the party which was always the second, like the radical party of Oleg Lashko, and uh, also what are the major surprises that Yulia Tivoshenko party is just beyond the level to be elected it's around 5% in different or 6% uh, in different polls. Or, for instance, we have just one party from the former Yanukovych allies, like opposition bloc, coming with a 10%. And um, that would be, and this radical party is around 6, 7% according to the all, all, all exit polls so far. And this is probably a good moment to talk a little bit about how the election system works. So what we're looking at now are the party lists. Ukrainians have two votes when they go to the ballot. They vote once for a political party, and they vote once for someone in their local constituency. So when we're talking about these percentages, we're talking about the party list that people voted for across Ukraine. It gives the clearest, simplest indication of the party they chose, but we do also have these single-member districts, here known as majority districts, the results of which will become clear over the next couple of days. Now, the reason we talk about Batkovshina, Yulia Timoshenko's party, just making it into parliament, is according to this exit poll, they received 5.6%. The barrier for entering parliament is 5%, so that is very close. And any shift from the exit poll to the official results that will be coming out could have a major significance both for her political future and for the party. As of course, we should explain as well that the half of the parliament is, of course, uh, elected by the MPs who have been voted in their constituencies, and still there can be the members of Yulia Tymoshenko party, of the President Poroshenko party, or from the opposition bloc, former Yanukovych um, allies party, and that we'll know later, because there are some areas in the country where uh, the candidates from these parties are um, running and doing pretty well. 
Mm -hmm. And so as we're looking at that, that also factors into what make, made this election exceptional. Um, exceptional in particular was Crimea. Crimea, which has no direct representatives in the next rata. The law and temporary occupation got rid of that. People who are able to go to mainland Ukraine were able to vote for a party, but there will be no direct representatives of Crimea there. In Donetsk and Luhansk, the situation was slightly different because the areas held do not correspond to the boundaries of the entire region. However, turnout there was low, roughly a third in the Donbass, so both Luhansk and Donetsk, um, which is lower than the national average, which was about 50%. That is just a few percentage points from what it was at the last election, so not a major upset. And we should say that, yeah, so far we already know that half of the Ukrainian uh, went to the polls, those eligible to vote, and uh, we know that up to 8% of them living in Crimea and Donbass due to the war and due to the annexation of Crimea couldn't participate. They could harm. There is a procedure to do that, but it's rather complicated. So up to four and a half million people, more or less, uh, hadn't been voting just because this territory is not under the Ukrainian control, though in a part of the Donbass the election took place. Mm -hmm. And always, we want to encourage you to be a part of the conversation that we have here uh, by tweeting at us at, at Hromatska and by also using the hashtag Hromatska. And now we would like to invite our, uh, the experts, uh, Veronika Vell from Chesno, it's an election monitoring organization, and Andriy Kruglashov, he's an independent political consultant. Uh, the biggest question of this election, for the Ukrainians at least, is will it be a different quality of this parliament? Uh, wouldn't they be less corrupt people, or would it be the same oligarchs, or the people who violated any kind of laws or anything? And Chesno campaign, which is fair and truthful in Ukrainian, was for years monitoring and gave an analysis on the each candidate, each MP, and we would like to know, will it be a different parliament and more or less a real change of the system, what a lot of people expect from the Maidan? Yeah, we can invite the, um, but before we can uh, really uh, tell, before we having them, we also have a chance to talk in this studio, studio with the Kiev mayor, the number one in the uh, Poroshenko leading party list, uh, Volodymyr Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko, <laughs> there are two brothers of them, no, and he Hard answered our part. questions about what would be the possible coalition and what will happen. Would you ask a question? Yeah. The first question? Yeah. Okay. Hello? Hello. We're ready. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. So late. Thank you. Well, it's, it's wonderful to pleasure. have you here. Um, is this business as usual? What, what can you tell from these results? Does it look like any other election or are there things just from the numbers that already look different to the two of you? We are a little bit surprised uh, because first, but uh, we have to understand this is just exit poll. Mm -hmm. This is not official result, and this is just a part of result because this, uh, we are talking only about partisan lists. And so uh, we really uh, waiting for uh, the result from single districts. Yeah, I would say uh, there are pretty good surprises. These are the results of Samo Pomic. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, support of the People's Front, as, and uh, there are not a good surprise of opposition bloc getting in, but communists are left out, and sad surprise is the inability of uh, Romadiansk opposition mm -hmm. to make it, but as we go deeper in campaign, we will be able to explain. Mm. the reasons. But what is the next step? Results. Once we have the official results, I mean, if we're looking at Poroshenko's block, for example, um, what, you know, what percentage would he would need, what would he need to make a coalition, or who would he be looking at now as possible coalition partners with this result? You know, uh, 
uh, it's hard to say, but probably he needs to look and negotiate with the uh, Narodny Front mm -hmm. and with Samopomich if they really want to have strong and big coalition. So it's very important for mm -hmm. Ukraine for now to have big and strong coalition. But uh, people uh, are talking about different situation when uh, they probably this new deputies they will try like to tr to try to um, to have new coalition where. Uh, there wouldn't be that where president block wouldn't be presented mm -hmm. uh, I think that this is uh, just uh, imagination of some people but in fact this is uh, very interesting because probably uh, this result they expect more than 23 percent so it, it would be possible to have a coalition without Poroshenko's block is that uh, correct theoretically it's, it depends on single of districts course. but in some case yeah hmm. We Very have to mind that uh, there are perhaps a hundred single district potential winners who are more or less loyal to Poroshenko. But mm -hmm. uh, really, for the new parties who made it through, it will be a big question whether we want to play go together with these guys mm -hmm. who may not look like a good partners on the coalitions. It will uh, really result of. Uh, uh, matter from the standpoint of image, mm -hmm. uh, whether we want to be with these guys in coalition uh, or not. And uh, can you just really explain to us, would it be a different parliament? The people who are, you know, how many like really corrupt people, you know, against whom there are real clear allegations, the people who, you know, voted for these laws uh, during the Yanukovych time, which used are called the so-called dictatorship law. How many of them can be in the parliament? Not just in the party list, because mm -hmm. there are some, and it was a big concern, mm -hmm. but also in these majority districts. I mean, I know we still ha no, have no final results, but clearly sometimes you know who are the ones that are running. Uh, um, you know, we have tried to analyze this uh, list and uh, deputy uh, and candidates from single districts. Uh, it was uh, two of our criteria. I mean, Chestnut criteria. Uh, the first criteria it was about the dictatorial law and about the people who were voting for that. Hmm. And different uh, one, it was about. Uh, uh, the people, like corrupted people, but it's, it's uh, not the people who uh, were uh, in, uh, it's just the people uh, who were like a, like f f a person from a journalist investigation. So that we could suspect them that they mm. really have uh, some uh, link. Well, because you're corruption. saying it's dependent on proof, really. Yes. There had to be yes, an investigation sure. into yeah. them. And so we yeah. tried to explain this information and disclose it for uh, Ukrainian voters. And it was our main goal to explain this information for people and encourage them to analyze this information and vote uh, for like honest candidate. But even though uh, you know, it's, it, we, we just wanted to do that. Uh, but people they um, could decide by. Uh, themselves so we could expect that we would like we would have almost like 80 candidates uh, like that mm -hmm. we call them dangerous candidates in new parliament almost like 80 and what we heard already uh, to, today, because all of these results of the president party and the um, prime minister party, they are so close, there would be a lot of bargaining, especially with these majority votes, a lot of like, you know, it's always happens in Ukraine that, you know, like, who will get in, who will join this part party? Can we really expect it? And really, like, do you think there would be some a different quality of the parliament? There should be, and definitely it could not stay the same. Uh, it's really hard to imagine that it's, uh, it will be worse than the previous one that voted with raising hands for dictatorial laws. So it's definitely the step forward. But uh, the negotiations may uh, be dirty if we know a lot of details. It may disappoint us. Anyway, uh, there will be a public pressure to leave those who voted for dictatorial laws, who know, are known to be corrupt, to let them out. Mm. Uh, because otherwise, president will keep losing.
his mm. rating. But there's also an element of continuity here. I mean, we have the two largest parties, which are the party of the president and the party of the former prime minister, right? So, yeah, probably future. <laughs> right, and then there are some experts who are saying this is a vote of confidence in the existing status quo. Yes. Is that a sentiment you'd agree with, or how do you see that? I would agree to that. Uh, that's not a huge uh, vote of confidence, but perhaps people are not uh, willing to change horses uh, during the uh, race, uh, yeah. bec especially under, in the times of uh, military conflict. It is pretty normal thing, uh, mm. and it shows that people are more or less uh, satisfied with the situation. They want it to be better. Well, that's the interesting thing, because what we've gotten is a more stable result. We've gone for parties that were established, that are involved in government, where early on when we were receiving numbers, there was a lot of talk about the radicals. And the talk about the radicals wasn't so much that Leshko and the party was so strong in its own, but this, you know, mentality that has been very strong in Ukraine for a long time of throw the bastards out. Like, these people did a bad job, we need to get rid of them and try someone else, right? And that's why these numbers went up and down. But at the end of the day, you know, Batkovshina looks to have done not particularly well, may not even make it into the next parliament, or if they make it in just barely. Yes, yes. Um, but then the parties they went for were the proven quantities, uh, which has an element of stability, I think. Yes, but see, uh, we, uh there is no party of regions anymore. Opposition bloc is four times smaller, even uh, by the best uh, yeah, result they are giving. Petkivshina, uh, as you said, reduced it. Svoboda is smaller again, at least than 50 percent, which mm. is uh, kind of the uh, sign that there is a renewal. Mm -hmm. but will we have the opposition in this uh, parliament, and who is this opposition? Sure. Uh, nobody wants to deal with uh, Leshko in the radical party, so he will have no other choice than being in the yeah. position. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with uh, Yulia Tymoshenko personally, and if she will manage to keep her party as a single entity. Uh, mm -hmm. The whole party will become in the position. If not, perhaps she and a few other people will. Despite of the, uh, her willingness and her willingness of her speakers to join a, a, any coalition in the parliament. I think they will, uh, the coalition will try to leave them out uh, at any cost, mm. almost at any cost. And the opposition bloc will not, uh, is very unlikely ally for anyone, including uh, Poroshenko party. No, maybe I had one other question I wanted to ask. I mean, are there, by looking at these parties, are there elements that we're missing? Because many of these parties are very, very young. You know, Poroshenko's being the best example, only created a couple of months ago. And there's some people that have pointed out some of the interest groups, you know, supported by oligarchs or connections to Yanukovych and Party of the Regions. They're not just in one party, they stretch across the different parties. Are, is there the potential to have interests that are not represented by one party, but by candidates in different blocs? You mean by uh, interest yes. groups uh, are, uh, you know, uh, people like Klyovachkin were splitting the risks. They were uh, putting eggs in different it's a baskets. It's former um, head of the president administration of Yanukovych, mm -hmm. you know, the guy who's still here. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them doing, you know, pretty well. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, as the usual tradition of oligarchs uh, to, to feed different beasts. The one mm -hmm. who uh, has put all his stakes in one party was Renat Akhmetov, and we know that he's not doing very well now. Mm. Uh, so that's the lesson which is learned, uh, and the oligarchs are trying to uh, <laughs> split uh, the risk definitely. It will be interest-driven. The mm. new parliament will be interest-driven. The extent is what matters, because okay. this parla parliament perhaps will not have a chance and the ability to ignore people. Uh, the oligarch system is the status quo, which has, is unnegotiable in Ukraine. Mm. But now people have more strength to challenge it and win back more uh, that influence. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot for that. We will have the guests from the parties, from uh, the Yatsenyuk party, Narodny Front. It's not the prime minister party, but it would be easier to understand. And they also uh, would ask him the direct questions. And so far, we can show what the number one in the present party, Vitaly Klitschko, told us 
some minutes before the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So everybody is looking in the world like what will be the coalition and who might be the prime minister, how this discussion is going on? It's nobody know. Uh, nobody knows. It's uh, the question uh, not who will be coalition, uh, prime minister. It's much more important uh, which reform in uh, which period of time uh, this reform will be implemented in, uh, in Ukraine because we listen about reform so many years and uh, people actually uh, expect uh, quick changes in our country, and that's why uh, big expectation for the next parliament, for the next uh, prime minister, and uh, the government. Uh, let's see. In the next couple of days, we have much more information. And with, uh, will Mr. Yatsenyuk will stay having this kind of results, preliminary results? Uh, uh, Right now, it's difficult to say. It's a uh, negotiations question. Uh, uh, with good result, Yatsunyu have uh, a lot of chance uh, to be the prime minister. But uh, the question of negotiation between uh, uh, different parties. And before, there were up to 40 and even 30 percent for the president party, and now it's almost 20. Why these results? Why do you have the worst results? What happened? What mistakes made? Might be have been done. Uh, I am very happy for the result. First of all, the Communist Party not member of Parliament anymore uh, because they doesn't work for interests of Ukraine for Ukraine's country. Uh, first point. Second point. Uh, the representative of uh, uh, Party of Region, uh, just a couple of people, very small. Uh, uh, amount in, in Parliament. And uh, also it's very important and a great result pro-European, pro-democratic forces in Ukraine have majority. It means uh, the uh, direction of our country never changed and uh, we see our country as modern, democratic, uh, European country and uh, the main question and expectation of uh, majority in Ukraine. Arseniy Yatsenyuk, who is uh, one of the prime minister and um, the Bloc Narodny Front is People's Front. People's it's Front, yeah, it's yeah. People's Front um, ha is the second now. So far to the exit polls, we have uh, one of the member of the team and probably future MP. We can't talk on that. Sergei Vysotsky, a former journalist, uh, one of those of journalists who is running for politics, join us, and we really would like to ask you that. Um, so, what would be your first steps? You know, like what the part of the party, what the bloc thinks about what would be would it be the coalition with the Poroshenko party? So I think it's uh, you know it would be quite unconstructive if we we will uh, not uh, accept the president as our partner. You know, uh, the thing is that uh, the two major political forces are bloc of Petro Poroshenko bloc and uh, the People's Front. So uh, it is logic that this pro-European coalition will be formed from the People's Front and Bloc uh, and Petro Poroshenko Bloc and maybe the self-defense Samopomich just because uh, they have this high level of support from mm. uh, the intelligent kind of Ukrainian electorate. It's the party of big cities, uh, the party of Facebook, mm. we call it. And uh, some indecision vote uh, gone to the Samopomich. Mm. So I think it's logic to form this uh, uh, narrow coalition from three parties, uh, two parties minimum, and uh, the wide coalition from all democratic forces that entered the parliament just to uh, guarantee that this course towards Europe and integration into the Western kind of uh, um, institutions and the Western institutions and some uh, uh, Western civil society, civilized society will be you know, held direct in the parliament. And we have to implement the uh, association agreement. 
as you know. So mm. in some cases we need uh, 300 votes. Uh, we, for some political reforms we need 300 votes in Parliament. Uh, all the democratic forces can provide this constitutional majority. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we will be in touch with everyone. Well, maybe, I hope so. It's my own opinion, another party opinion. Mm. Non-opposition block, because, you know, I just can't uh, imagine myself uh, that I will vote or cooperate with the people who uh, literally, you know, ordered to shoot us at Maidan. Mm. But I mean, it's one, and you mentioned it, but I think it really has to be emphasized. It's tremendous that the three largest parties, you know, based on these polls yeah. in Ukrainian parliament are unified in being pro-Western, yeah. European-oriented, um, because this has just never happened before. Yeah, I mean, this is huge. The communists didn't enter. And the Parliament. communists didn't so enter like, on top of that. So it's, like, it's a giant it's shift story. in the whole political yeah. spectrum. Well, but, like, thank you, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Thank you for showing Ukrainians who we are, where we all belong to, you know. Hmm. It's our place, not with Moscow, not with the guys who are killing our guys. It's with the whole civilization but, against mm, Russia. But, I mean, was this a result anyone in the party was expecting? Were they expecting such a strong no. result? No. We, um, we expected uh, a couple of days ago that we will probably have 15%. So 12 okay. to 13% will um, uh, was guaranteed by our polls, in a polls. And we expected the summon decision vote, uh, maybe 15, mm. 17. Because it seems yeah, spectacular. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're training for a marathon and you look at your times, you know, you have a couple of them and you figure we probably won't do the best that yeah. day, but maybe we'll do all right. Yeah, yeah. But this is, you know, you know, the people's front moving forward. You know, they were below 10% for a bit. Then they got higher. And then this is their best we, result. Uh, our start was uh, five and five point four percent. Five point four percent. So yeah. not very far from what Batkovshina's yeah, party got months. tonight. Yeah, yeah. It's for one a month. But some uh, of it's our respect. They done the four times higher than they started. That's so, true. Four or five times. So it's a it's, it's a tremendous uh, um, you know will of Ukrainians to see some new faces in Parliament. But uh, so, what will be the condition or precondition of the uh, block of the People's Block or of the People's Front? Uh, the Yatsenyuk as a prime minister? Uh, well, it's uh, logical. No, if we have, uh, uh, oh, look. What our else? Campaign, yeah. What else? Our, our campaign was built on this uh, um, uh, on this thesis, like Yatsenyuk is the prime minister. You want to. Uh, for Yatsenyuk to be the prime minister in, in the next coalition, in the next uh, government, you have to work with the people's front to show some, you know, uh, high level of uh, trust to Yatsenyuk. So it was one of the major uh, themes of the campaign. It's logical. So I think uh, Poroshenko has 52 or 53 uh, percent of support in Ukrainian society. The Yatsenyuk, uh, Mr. Yatsenyuk has the 51, 52 percent. They are very much equal in the trust that Ukrainians are given to them as the high authorities. So I think it would be logic that the guy who has uh, um, one of the tremendous support in Ukrainian society as a prime minister will be the prime minister next parliament, and the next uh, coalition, yeah. You know, still it so far looks like they are the same parties which have been uh, here before now, right after the Maidan, the Poroshenko, Yatsenyuk in the government. And there was a lot of criticism that all the laws, like anti-corruption law, lustration law, law on IDPs, and the real reforms hadn't been really done within this period with the same people. And yeah, your I, prime I, minister I was in problem. government. Poroshenko okay, was a president yeah. already for the months. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, a situation, an illustration law passed uh, because of the unification of for the whole Democrats in Parliament the first time, the pressure of uh, civil groups, second and third, uh, Mr. Alexander Turchino, the Speaker of the Parliament, the third number of People's Front, uh, voted it the seventh time. No, he, seventh, he pressed and pushed this uh, law seven times mm. at one uh, session of Parliament. And then after seven uh, after the seventh, uh, it was put in the seventh time uh, on the ballot, so it was voted. Mm. So it's like but it's a whole cooperation about mm. the reforms. I see, I get your point, but you know, we uh, spent 18 billion hryvnias this year uh, to the war. You know, uh, the annexion of Crimea and the occupation of uh, Donbas costed Ukraine 18 billion hryvnias. It's a third of the Ukrainian budget. The reforms. 
we need money for the reforms. We need uh, you know, some budget pillow for the reforms. We can't mm -hmm. do reforms without some, uh, you know, uh, some... Uh, well, there has to be a basis yeah. for it. You have to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the question that I have off of that, it's similar, but a lot of what we heard from, from especially from Poroshenko, but I think also from People's Front a little bit, is that the time for reform is really in the next parliament. They were saying, yeah. we've done what we can, but the serious reforms that people were on my down for that they wanted, yes. that happens in the next parliament. So what kind of pressure is there then now for the People's Front and for the politicians? You know, is there, there must be more pressure to perform and to really realize yeah, these things. Yeah, we have pro-democratic will have this uh, democratic and European coalition. Because, you know, the coalition and the uh, incumbent parliament that will go in a month or so, I hope so, it was uh, uh, constructed with the party of regions and this pro-Moscow uh, voices. And only the situation of Ukrainian revolution and Maidan turned them eventually into not our, you know, mm. like European guys <laughs> or Western guys just to... Uh, for this well, was convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. When a question off of that, we had one. We had a question from Twitter, which was yeah, earlier, yeah. and it's limited to your statement. Yeah. And the question was, how can we limit the power of oligarchs in the new parliament, and what can be done to strengthen democracy? With, with, uh, I think with the construction of firm civil society and civil pressure groups. I have no, no. Uh, every politician like myself, Yatsenyuk, Poroshenko, every MP needs to be controlled. So we need to be controlled from the civil society and the society. Mm -hmm. We need those uh, strict and, you know, uh, uh, tough uh, civil society groups that will pressure us, like the pressure of the law for illustration, you know. Like Yegor Sobolev, he will be incumbent in the next parliament, one of the authors of uh, uh, illustration law. So he can, you know, uh, show and tell you if he will uh, be on this uh, uh, TV program, how did he pressure the illustration law Mm. to the parliaments. He held uh, all these meetings with political forces. He pressured with the direct action and with some uh, um, actions of direct control. So it was just the whole complex of pressure from the civil society to get uh, uh, through the parliament illustration law. So mm -hmm. there is we, need, we, we need very strong civil society. There is still one uh, question from our foreign audience. You know, when you look on your list, uh, on the party list, there are really many combat battalion leaders, yeah. you know, people who are coming from the front, you know, like the faces who, uh, some people would doubt their qualification for working in the parliament and call it that it's pretty populistic to get the guys yeah. in the uniform to run on the parliament. And in particular for having like a, up to you four know, combat have, battalions yeah, and have, all that. I have, I have a very simple answer to the question. Uh, in the former gov um, government, uh, not government, the administration of President Yanukovych and in the former parliament, we had this guy, his name was Andrei Partnov. He was one of the most talented Ukrainian lawyers. He was overqualified for the working in the parliament. He was very talented. And he uh, just used his talent of law lawmaker to reinforce all this uh, dictatorship laws of 16 January. So these guys, the combats, they know the first point. They know what to do with the army, you know. They want, they will go to the Ministry of Defense. They will go to the, uh, to the Defense Committee of Parliament. And they know what to do with the front, what to do with the equipment in the army. They are professionals in this. And we need quite dynamic army reform. We need some new weapons. We need some new uh, format and structure of army organization. Is the first. Second, they spill blood for Ukraine. They're patriots. I think that if you're a patriot, you, know, you can't sell your country to Moscow, to Kremlin, like those guys did, like Partnov, who's now in Moscow, did, like uh, Mr. Yanukovych did, and other guys. There will, well, there was many all qualified guys in party of regions for the parliament. So what good did they do? They done only evil. I think that the guys who spilled the blood for Ukraine, fought for Ukraine, fought for the country, they will do no better and no worse uh, to Ukraine. So following, like, there are different comments on that, different thoughts. Thanks a lot. We Thank had you. the representative of the, so far, according to the election polls, second uh, best party uh, voted in Ukraine uh, this night. And to remember, we would have the representative of the surprise part of the some op surprise winner for maybe for somebody is some of Pomish self-reliance after. But I also would like to remind you that there are 
Uh, still a lot of things happening in the east of the country, but in the city of Mariupol, the election took place. We would like you to give to get a bit of feeling how the elections in that area looked like. And thanks a lot, Sergei, Thank you for so much. being here. Thank you. на 388-й выборчей комиссии. Вона открылась, никаких правопорушений нет. В целом 1950 выборцев на этой дельнице. Отримано 1952 по одномандатному бюллетню и 1950 по одномандатному. Присутні 12 з 16 членів комісії. На даний момент йде виборчий процес. Все добре, ніяких правопорушень. Виборча комісія номер 142365 відкрилася о 8 годині ранку. За списком виборців у нас 1649, із них 21 – голосування за місцем перебування. Сейчас так 142-236, комиссия открылась вовремя, все нормально работает, явка сейчас высокая на данное время. Комиссия работает без нарушений, у нас присутствуют наблюдатели. Self-reliance was the uh, party uh, which uh, is now, according to the exit poll, is uh, the third. It, it has around like 11, 13 different kind of percent. And we have uh, Alex Kripnik, who is number three in the list. And uh, it is founded by the Lviv mayor, the mayor of the city in uh, Lviv, who have been considered pretty successful and a uh, very ambitious pe person. We will show the interview with him a bit later. And of course, uh, this is party considered to be the part of the new faces. Mm -hmm. So were you surprised by the result? Or were the people in the party surprised? Or what were their uh, reaction? Actually, no. 
We were expecting near 12 per cent, and we suppose that it will be near this value. So for the last few weeks, we were see that the support of our party is growing, mm -hmm. and uh, just we have a worth, absolutely exciting meeting in a lot of uh, the cities around the country, and we saw that the people are supporting new faces. They're supporting the idea of telling the truth, not depending how hard it is. They're supporting the idea of uh, trying to be maximum open and transparent. So we, uh, for us, it was not a big surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting because a lot of parties have tried to make that claim that they were new faces and they were the party of the Maidan. But with Samo Pomic, it really does seem to be true. 100% yeah. new faces, can, except maybe our mayor. Can you <laughs> explain? It's hard to understand that one of the leaders of the party is the mayor of Lviv. And he is not number one in the list. He is not gonna, but all the, you know, there, there were a lot of posters and billboards with his name. How he would run? Will be kind of a shadow uh, guy behind the party who will decide how he will uh, work, how this maybe party will good, work? Maybe it's a good question to him, you know. <laughs> it's not for me. Uh, uh, but, uh, but what was the deal when he invited uh, no, you? No, you no, know, you know, there was no deal. I'm not the guy who can make any kind of such deal that, oh, you will be, I will g govern you and you'll do what. I will tell you. So for me, it's not possible. You know, I'm just absolutely a self reliance man who just have a nice business outside of Ukraine. And so for me to go to political activity, it's meaning something which is important to me. So, and such agreement is not the kind which I am ready to perform. So, but from the view side of the major, uh, he was uh, expected to have some agreement on values which is important to him and important to me. So this, this is, was only one agreement which we have with him. Will your party be in coalition with the President Poroshenko and the probably currently Prime Minister Yatsenyuk? Honest answer, no. I don't know. Uh, just because it greatly depends on them. We have some major uh, stops, if we can say in such a way, which is for us is very important. And these stops is dependable if they will say, OK, we're supporting you, we're thinking that your ideas, which you have, and which a lot of parties were saying, okay, we'll do the same. We'll go, we'll uh, say, uh, support lustration, we support the centralization, we support uh, the, that you, there will be no selection to the government on the basic of the quotas for the parties when you received only the place due to the, and this place is a payment for election. So we're thinking that it is time to select to the government as much as possible professional people. So this is uh, for us, is which were important. Of course, we understand that this is not the time the country is in very bad state. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're thinking that we need to support country we need to maybe have the coalition on values, uh, but we will not to, um, play in the game which is very usual to Ukrainian mm -hmm. parliament. Or no, no business as usual. But I mean, when we look at you know, the values you're talking about, or at least the general political values in terms of being anti-corruption and being pro-European, there are similarities between Samopomic and the People's Front and Poroshenko's bloc. But what would you say the two largest differences are between Samopomic and those parties where you know, they don't see eye to eye completely? Oh, you know, just uh, I'm not a greatly political guy who can make a such big analysis. Uh, the only things which uh, I can say what is for me is important, so maybe it will give you some idea of the difference. For me, still big question, who is responsible for the killing of 100 people on Maidan, which is still not answered. And we have the people who are now won the election, and they still have no answer to this question. For me, it's important to hear who is responsible for the Ilovaisk and what amount of people were killed uh, under Ilovaisk. For me, it's also important who is responsible for the losing of Crimea. And we have no idea about this, so nobody answered. So this is a question which is, for me, important. Responsibility. Who responsibility is, yeah. and maybe transparency. If mm -hmm. it, if it's, and responsibility that if we have the names and surnames of the people, some of them have to be in jail. Mm -hmm. If the uh, eight months is not enough to find the people who is responsible for Maidan, 
So what we have to expect? Just once again words. So this is, for me, it's action. The real steps is more important than words. But we understand these are kind of a demands to keep uh, people responsible for what has been done in Ukraine. But there is a long way forward and the economy is in the big, we have a big problems with the economy and it's not just, you know, the values which can sort out the issue. Yeah. What are your first real things you're gonna to do in this parliament? Yeah, it, if you can like really shortly to tell in this particular situation. Economy, so few facts. 30% uh, uh, cut down of the budget. Yes, we have lost so between what is income and what is spending 30% difference. What do we have to do? So the first step is to do something with the new budget for the new year. We have to have it realistic because the spending on the government is 50% is one of the biggest spending. Russia have 42, uh, China have, it seems to me, like 17. So uh, only very rich country can allow themselves to spend such much of money on the government. So we have to cut. We have to reform the government. So this is the first steps, which is from the viewpoint of economy, uh, which is necessary to do. And of course, uh, energy problem, gas. We are receiving money from international funds, which we the same day returning back to the Russia as, as the payment for the gas. So let's continue the understanding to the people. It's meaning that our kids or our grandkids will pay this money just because their parents were not able to pay the real price for the gas. But how so is it possible to cut at a time of war when you have negative economic growth um, and when you know you have the cost of energy going up as well? How, how can the government cut back when there's so many demands and so much to pay for? Oh, you know, this is, if this was only demands, you know, this is, in some cases, uh, I will ask you the same uh, question. How was possible that the last year our nuclear power station were in losses when they have the lowest price for the energy in the Europe. Mm -hmm. So how that was possible? So in an energy sector, there's such great amount of gaps. So you're saying difference. it's management is uh, the issue? It's not only management, it's stolen a lot off. How is it possible that we, only we and Turkmenistan have no this uh, gas calculator, I don't know, which is uh, in flats, how it's in mm -hmm. English will be. So how is it possible? having the difference in the price. So it's my opinion that we have to clean up a lot of mm -hmm. in the energy sector. And it will give us a lot of money just for which will be not stolen. So that there's inefficiency in the yes. system so that can be efficiency. dealt with. So uh, I support here the Kaha Benukiza that we have not to have this uh, energy efficiency committee, all this stuff, just we have to give the real price. There's no other way. When we look at uh, your party list, we of course have people like you, who is a successful businessman, uh, working with IT, the people who you, like a civil uh, society activist, but besides, like a number two is the uh, leader of the battalion Donbass, it's a volunteer battalion. We have a press secretary of the information war department of the battalion, somebody else, and it kind of signs, I, I was looks, this yeah, it, it looks very, you know, <laughs> somehow not uh, fitting, because we understand that the Patriots, um, it, it's important, we have, we, we mm -hmm. heard it from the previous guest, but it's, being a Patriot, it's not just something yeah, for what you're going into the parliament. Yeah, Ex we, we are During the times of the war. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, we are expecting to have professional people, yes, in the parliament also. Uh, and for me, it was also the question what, when I was discussing this with the people and when I first met with this guy from Donbass, uh, but to, for me, it was a crazy surprise that they, these people are absolutely very well organized and in some case, uh, we can say that they even very talented people. For example, the number 14 in our uh, list, uh, Yaroslav Maksimov, seems to me, 
maybe I'm wrong in his surname, the guy who was in IT who decided that it is a big problem in the uh, this ato uh, uh, this uh, in this war. So he decided to go with his uh, Raptors and this with his helicopters and go to Simon Semenchenko and discuss with him if it's possible. So he was the first guy who put it on the front, who put it in the war line and who was uh, very efficient in this. So what I see, I see the guy who are not only having the idea which is necessary to help, but who can do something, hmm. doers. It's also important, this fact. So they are very well, uh, and they have a very high qualification from the viewpoint of, uh, of their previous experience. So I'm not, uh, after discussing with them, I'm not so skeptical. I see that they can be efficient, and in other way, they also have, they are brave. You know, they have eggs. If, if you can say in such a way. Balls. Uh, yeah. Balls, sorry, balls, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, just like too late. They have balls. So soon you'll be an MP if uh, the polls are correct. You're number three in this list. And uh, are you going still to vote for uh, and demand the uh, cancelling of the MP's impunity? Oh, you know, uh, personally, I don't know and I am not understanding what it is. So I was not in Parliament, so I don't feel that I need something to protect myself from uh, from what. But will you put yes. it on voting that yes. you know you come and tell like we don't want it anymore? Uh, we have the agreement with guys that we will do this in a personal way because you know that the problem with this law is the, the need to pass through the uh, changing of the constitution. So that's why it's not the easy way. We have to have 300 votes, which I expect from what I hear from uh, the previous colleague and what I hear today for the t television, if uh, all parties will uh, fulfill what they promise, so it will be the easy way. So it's like, like, like mm -hmm. five minutes procedure and that's all. Uh, from the other way, if we will not be going in such way, we'll have the agreement between the possible members of the parliament that we'll do this in a personal way. We'll write the uh, special note that, uh, okay, personally we ask you to take off this, what you say, how it will be? Uh, impunity. Impunity. Oh, okay. Mm. So, so like... okay, thanks so much for uh, coming um, to us that late. We hope to talk to you later and answer the questions when would be the, with the first results. Uh, it was Alex Kripnik, uh, number three in self-reliance party list, the party which is surprisingly doing very well in the mm -hmm. uh, when Ukrainian voters are voting in Moscow. The party is coming from Lviv. Uh, hmm. from the Western Ukraine, that's what we know now. And we have a um, short interview, we, may, we ask a few questions of the mayor of Lviv, who is the founder of this party, and a lot of people tell, might run for the next presidency of Ukraine. Hmm. Maybe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Вы идете как новая сила. Чи будете вы входить в коалицию? Це все-таки та партія, яка вже була при владі, в тій партії багато, в тих партіях, там у Яценюка і в Порошенка багато. Ми за єдність в нашій країні, але для нас важливі принципи, щоб на ключові посади призначалися кращі люди по галузях, по напрямках. Я проти квотного розподілу посад, який привів до великої біди в нашій державі. На яких умовах ви цю коаліцію війдете? Виключно фаховий рівень роботи, щоб ми бачили тих людей, яких пропонують. Якщо це третя партія, так. яку ви позицію, яка все ж яку позицію ви очікуєте? Спікера в кабінеті міністрів, якісь посади. Ви знаєте, це на сьогоднішній день треба захистити результати голосів, тому що я бачу, є спроба певних людей махлювати. Коли будуть кінцеві результати, коли буде озвучений переможець коаліції, то тоді він пропонує співпрацю. І сідається за круглі стіли, починається робота. Сьогодні про це говорити, це є, ну, мені здається, завчасно. Останнє, у вас в листі передвиборчому є чимало, є представники, наприклад, батальйону Донбас, є комбати. Багато хто вважає це популізмом. І питають, як вони, партія, вони, яка заснована на іншому, є, вони є... Вони не є військові, вони є громадянські люди, які в час війни взяли зброю і пішли захищати свою державу. 
Кожен з них має свою цивільну професію, свій факт. Це є самодостатні гідні люди, які мають загострене віща справедливості. А люди на основі якої експертизи вони йдуть саме в парламент, як депутати? Ну, тому що вони фахівці по своїх галузях. Один з міжнародних питань, другий з питання, які має велику ІТ-компанію. Семен Семенченко – це є дійсно людина, яка має заострене відчуття справедливості. Його задача – це розбудова добровольчого руху в нашій державі. Я думаю, цей мандат йому особливо буде корисний, тому що сьогодні я бачу сили, які хочуть це все прибити до землі, яким це не потрібно, яким потрібен тотальний контроль в країні. А мені треба, щоб люди були власниками країни, а не одна політична сила чи одна людина. who is internews expert and the uh, philosopher Ukrainian philosopher with whom is running this project uh, looking at the foreign media how they describe Ukraine and what is special on that so uh, we'll see what are the first um, you know first real results how what is the yeah, first so what feedback? have you read and seen what's the feedback so far well it's interesting that uh, what I noted is that before the elections there was a kind of a feeling in some of the media kind of a what I would call a premature disappointment. For example, The Economist has published a very critical article saying that basically there are old faces under the new masks going into the Ukraine. So the disappointment Parliament. that nothing would change? Yeah, that right? nothing is changing, that there are no reforms, etc., etc. Now what I see, it's a kind of a very positive, positive attitude to, of many media. For example, Le Monde or Libération, the French newspapers there, mm -hmm. went out even almost with the same title, saying that the, this is dramatic, total victory of pro-Western forces. Um, the same with Die Welt or, or the Spiegel, the German papers. So the European paper is presenting it in a positive light? As yeah, a in a very positive way, because they are basically focusing on this, you know, mostly geopolitical game. So mm -hmm. for them, this aspect that pro-European and pro-Western forces have won the elections so it expands and their the pro-Russian pro forces are, or the communists are no longer there, it's, it's a very positive sign, yeah. Hmm. And uh, let's also maybe put that we understand that for the foreign media, there were a lot of like Timoshenko, uh, who was for a while in prison, was some kind of the face they know. Also, a lot of, uh, there were a lot of talks about the radicals coming to the party. There is a radical party by Lashko, who was supposed to be the second, that was, mm -hmm. was before, and now it's uh, like almost the fourth with 6%. Yeah, the radical, the topic of the radicalism is, of course, always there. So uh, during the Maidan times, there were much, much of the discourse that there are radicals on Maidan, etc. And even some, a few days before the election, there were several pub publications precisely on Lashko, because mm. Lashko is somebody very strange for Western media. Well, he's dynamic. He captures it. But I mean, the interesting thing is Western, any media, but Western media in particular, always chooses a couple of figures to yeah, focus exactly. on. And exactly. one of those you had was Klitschko during Maidan, but Lashko was another one Lashko, of them. And, and uh, all, this, all this stuff with the internet party and with mm. Darth Vader at, uh, also. But uh, it's, it's difficult to say whether they, of course, they, they, they are, they're seeing that, that the radicals uh, don't really count many votes in these elections. For example, Lashko is some 6% and then right sector is not probably in the parliament and that's for border also. Uh, when focusing on Lashko, I think they, they underestimated one, one little thing is that Lashko is not a very structured radical, so it's just a radical coming out of the blue, it's not real structured nationally. But he's still in the parliament yeah. and some of his people, they can get uh, also into the parliament according to the majority but, vote, so they yeah. will be there. But for example, it's uh, German newspapers, it's, it's interesting how, you know, some, some tendencies, how some nuances are, are straight. German newspapers are focusing very much on, on, on radicals, saying that precisely, uh, the Spiegel is saying that it was unexpected a bad results for the radicals, for the right sector, for Soboda, for Lashko, etc. Although the Guardian, the article today's guard, uh, article of the Guardian by Sean Walker, mm -hmm. basically pays much attention to, to radicals, and I think overestimating it. Mm. So, uh, if uh, to summarize, so what are the main concerns of? If you talk to the foreign media, what would you think they would write, well, and would, what they? 
would, what they put the criticism on? Well, I think there are three major concerns before the elections. First, that there is radicalism. Second, that there are lack of reforms. And third, very widely discussed is that there will be a third Maidan, Maidan number three. So it was discussed by economists, it was discussed by Le Monde, etc., etc. Whereas these elections, in my opinion, show basically that the popular support for Maidan number three is very tiny mm. because you have not only the presidential and prime minister uh, parties who are winning the elections, but also some op some appointments, something, you know, related well, they want to, to work in the system. Mayor, mm -hmm. Lviv mayor and to, some, to something of the establishment. Well, Western media are noticing that, but in my opinion, not, not really mm. to, uh, probably to that extent. Which and had the Western media, had there been much written about Samopomic ahead of this election? Well, it's, it's all, 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 of course, unexpectedly for, for everybody. So I think the, this is a division of opinions. What is the most unexpected thing? Some say that the popular front results. Le Monde saying that Yatsenyuk's results is the most unexpected thing. Uh, some say that some homage. But interestingly, Spiegel is calling some opponents a liberal force which is kind of a very interesting, because in Ukrainian discourse you would not say this in precisely in these terms, in these ideological terms. They actually mentioned that they have some conservative family values in exactly, um, yeah. them. But, but they seem to be more economically liberal. I mean, from what we were hearing today in terms of the price should be the price that's actually paid and that it shouldn't be regulated yeah, yeah, or just but, but, dictated. But the issue is that the, the, the Western audience is trying to, you know, to structure, to trying put to some structure, <laughs> put some structure into Ukrainian politics. <laughs> Politics, which is still not ideological. So well, you Ukrainians say, might like some structure cannot, in their yeah, politics, yeah, exactly. too. So, well, thanks so much, uh, Volodymyr. We will Thank go you. on with that. Uh, and within the next uh, programs, we would definitely analyze, will these new forces uh, be really the new forces? Uh, how the young politicians would do? What will happen to the radicals? And uh, will be really any change after, since we still have the prime minister and the president parties uh, winning? So thanks a lot, and uh, before we give the word for the, our Ukrainian colleagues, we also would remind that, uh, to show a short clip from the video, how the election took place today. It was a voting in the main military hospital, so as we know, Romanski correspondent from the field also tell, there are still shelling, even today, on the front line. It uh, seems to be the kind of celebration day in the party headquarters, uh, but very different life somewhere else in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you for joining us and catch us again next week. <laughs> Good night. Ми біля входу до головного військово-клінічного шпиталю України, і тут зараз відбувається голосування військовослужбовців, які були поранені в ході операції антитерористичної на Донбасі. І зараз прийдемо середно, подивимося, як відбувається голосування, з яким настроєм голосують наші герої. Приблизно 60% військовослужбовців голосують себе в палатах, через те, що їм важко пересуватися. І, власне, ми тут для того, тут хірургічне відділення, власне, тут для того, щоб подивитися, як відбувається процес голосування. Ну, так вже заканчуємо. Ясно. Як там активно голосують? Активно голосують. А куди ми? 100%? Вони всі лежачі, да. так, так куди, куди, куди вони дідуться. Ясно. Ну, ми з вами, якщо можна, так? Да? Устанавливаємо лічність. Угу. Смотрим, есть ли в списке. Если есть в списке, выдаем бюллетень. Uh -huh. Если больной житель еще и 221-го округа избирателя, то выдаем, кроме противных списков, еще и мажоритарные. Ну, Если нет, да. и все. Человек, а дальше процедура такая же самая. Uh -huh. Я вижу, что вы так очень быстро приняли решение. То есть вы знали, за кого вы звоните? Да, конечно. А как за... За нашу Украину. За майбутнє. Як вважаєте, ці вибори є важливими? Вони змінять щось? Вони дуже важливі для нашої країни, звичайно. І я вважаю, що вони багато що змінять. В крайній мірі заберуть п'яту колону з нашої Верховної Ради. А, скажіть, ви як не шкодуєте про те, що там з вами сталося? Все правильно було? 
Все было правильно, да. Я злился живой. Про что мне шкодовать? Что можно было бы сказать солдатам, которые, возможно, не понимают, почему они поранены и опинились в шпиталю? Ну, я прикордонник. Я могу сказать, что наша 